In this video, I'm going to take you through the Binance Exchange. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you do, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and share if you feel that others may benefit. Also, please do head over to my website at everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step by step guides. Binance is a popular cryptocurrency exchange for traders and enthusiasts looking to buy and sell a wide variety of cryptocurrencies at low fees. Users can buy Bitcoin and altcoins with more than 40 different fiat currencies. They also have their own Binance chain and Binance coin or BNB, which is widely available across several exchanges and can be used to pay for fees on the exchange. Binance exploded onto the scene in the mania of 2017 and has since gone in to become one of the top crypto exchanges in the world. If you're from the UK or Europe, they also have Binance Jersey for purchases with GBP or Euros. And if that's something you're interested in, then I've got a full tutorial available. They now have their own trust crypto wallet where users can invest, make payments and dApps in one easy to use all in one package. Plus, they have a multitude of finance options, which include the likes of savings and earning interest, staking, finance pools, their own debit card, as well as new crypto loans. I've previously created a few Binance tutorials. However, today's will be an update. And with so many features available, we'll just be focusing on the exchange today. How to trade, the trading fees and limits, plus how to secure your account. However, if you are interested in more of the finance options, then what I'll do is I'll create tutorials for those if that's something that you're interested in. So let's get started. And to create an account, the process is fairly simple and straightforward. You'll need to enter in things such as your email address, creating a password, as well as uploading some photographic ID. And if you are signing up for the first time, I have a link and a referral code in the summary below, which won't cost you anything, but I'd be really grateful if you did use it. Then once you're all signed up and logged in, the first thing you'll need to do is to finance your Binance account, which you can do from a whole host of different currencies. Or alternatively, if you don't already have any crypto to trade with, they have a few options on their site to buy some crypto, which you can do via the likes of your debit or credit card. They have a P2P crypto exchange and third party payments. However, to fund your account, you can go across to wallet in the top right hand side of your screen and go to Spot Wallet, which is for deposits and withdrawals. And any balance that you have on screen will appear in this section, which you can also hide. And it will show you your 24 hour limit too. It will then give you a list of all your different coins and you can go ahead and deposit the specific type of asset that you'd like to. So for example, if you'd like to deposit some Ethereum, click on the deposit on the right here, and it'll then provide you with the address or QR code where you can send your funds to. And before you start trading, you'll want to secure your account, which you can do by heading across to the right hand side of the screen, looking under your profile and going to security. And there's several different ways that you can secure your account. So you have the likes of Google authentication, you have SMS and email verifications too, for withdrawals and security modifications. Or the method that I personally use is a YubiKey. And I've got a full tutorial about YubiKeys if you're interested in finding out more. And you can then set your required actions that you'd like to use that key for, such as the likes of withdrawing an API, logging in or resetting your password. So now that we've got some funds to trade with and they're secured, we can get started with the exchange. And as you can see, there's a whole host of trading pairs that you can use within Binance. And there's different types of markets too. So you have the BNB market, your Bitcoin markets, alt markets, and also fiat markets. So at the top of the screen, under spot, you'll see there's different ways that you can trade. So there's basic for simple trades, there's classic or advanced, as well as some other options too. We're gonna be using the classic version today but it's up to you which one you want to use. I just prefer the classic view and I find it easy to use and it gives me all the options that I personally need. So now we're over on our trading view. So let's take a look. So over on the right hand side of the screen, 
you have your different type of markets. So again, you have BNB, Bitcoin and alts, as well as your fiat markets too. And this is the market that you're going to be trading in. And you can go ahead and choose your desired currency from the list. And in this example, I'm going to be choosing an alt market, which is going to be Ethereum, as I have some Ethereum to trade with. And I'd like to trade for BAT. Now, if it wasn't appearing in this list, you can search for the different types of assets from the section here. And you can also mark these as favourites by clicking on the little star. Then once you've selected that market, you'll see that the rest of the screen has now populated for that specific market. So it provides me with the last price. It shows me the 24 hour change, 24 hour high and low, plus the 24 hour volume. Then over on the far left, you can see all the prices that people are willing to sell at in the top half in red. And then all the prices people are willing to buy at in green. And then the number in the middle shows the last sale price. Then in the centre of the screen, you have some charts and trading views that you can view over specific periods of time. You also have the trade history over on the right hand side here, which provides you with all the buy and the sell orders that have currently gone through. And it shows you everything that's in the market at the moment. Or if you had any of your own trade history, that would appear under yours. Now to place a buy order, you'll be using this centre box underneath the graphs here in green. And there are several different types of orders that you can place for your trade. And they include the likes of limit, market and stop limit orders. Now the first way I'm going to be showing you is a market order. And that's ideal for beginners, which fills instantly at the market price. So all you need to do with a market order is enter the amount of that asset that you'd like to purchase. Or if you prefer, you can choose from 25%, 50%, 75% or 100% of your balance. And I'd like to purchase about 70 BAT tokens. Now just in terms of the fees that you'll be paying with Binance. Binance charge an average fee of 0.1% on each trade that a user makes, which is one of the lowest fees around. Plus, those who choose to pay via Binance tokens can get discounts on their trading fees. And when you're happy to go ahead with your order, you can go to buy BAT. Now usually when you place an order, that will show underneath your open order section until it's filled. But in this case, that's immediate, as it's a market order. Therefore, it's now appearing under my 24 hour order history. And it provides me with a breakdown of that order. So it gives me the date, the pair, the market, what I've done in terms of buying or selling. It shows me my average, the price, how much was executed. It tells me my total and it tells me the fact that it's filled. Now, this won't be the cheapest way of purchasing your crypto. However, it's certainly convenient, especially for beginners. But next, let's take a look at a limit order. And I'm going to do this on the sell side. So if I select limit, And limit orders allow you to define a price that you want to buy below the current market price or sell at price above the current market price. And in this way, you can place an order without having to constantly watch the markets 24 seven and wait for the market to reach your price. So in this example, I've got just under 70 BAT tokens, which I'd like to sell. However, I don't want to take what the current market price is. I'd like to sell mine for slightly more. So in this case, I can up the price that's currently pre-filled into this section. And just so that you're aware, this is just an example. I'm not trying to make a huge amount of profit or any profit during this. I'm just trying to show you how to buy or sell with these different types of orders. So I'm going to select a price that I'm happy to sell at. And then I'm going to put in the amount that I'd like to sell. And in this example, I'm going to sell 69 BAT. It then shows me my total amount at the bottom here. Then I can go ahead and sell my BAT. And that order has now been executed and it's waiting within my open orders for someone to fill that order. And you'll also see your order appearing on the order book here. But let's just take a look at that open order. So this time it's telling me that my type of order is a limit order. It shows me how much has been filled but I can also cancel this order if I wish. 
And that's great because if the market moves drastically in the wrong direction, or if you feel you've made a mistake, you can go ahead and cancel this order. And as you can see, that order's now gone through and is appearing in my 24 hour order history. Then when you're ready to, you can withdraw your funds from the exchange. Now, best security practices state that you shouldn't leave your crypto on an exchange without access to your private keys and where they're far more likely to get hacked with so many assets on there. Therefore, you'll want to store these safely in a secure wallet, such as a software wallet, a hardware wallet like a Trezor or a Ledger, or their own trust wallet. And if you're interested in finding out more about the trust wallet, then I've got a full tutorial which I'll pop in the summary below, along with my link for Binance. So if you want to withdraw, you can go up to your wallet and go to Spot Wallet. You can select the asset that you'd like to withdraw. Then just in relation to those withdrawal fees, as you can see from the list here, which shows you your minimum withdrawal, your deposit fees and your withdrawal fees. You'll see that the withdrawal fees tend to vary on each different type of digital currency. But if you want to go ahead and withdraw your crypto, simply enter in the recipient's address, put in the amount that you'd like to send across, which you can type into here, or you can select max. Then when you're ready to, you can go ahead and submit. So that was my run through of the Binance Exchange. And I hope that you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to my website at everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.